This Christian man exposed some of the most demonic Mormon doctrines the LDS Church believes while speaking to this Mormon guy. And you may be shocked to hear some of the most disturbing teachings Mormons actually believe. This will unveil their faces, and the brethren and sisters in the circle will return to their seats. Oh, Lord, what are you doing? On the right is the mark of the square. It is placed in the garment over the right breast suggesting to the mind exactness and honor in keeping the covenants entered into this day. You do believe you're going to be, you can be a God? I do believe in a divine potential. Yeah, so you yeah. can be a God, right? Yeah. If you do attain that level, will you be able to have children that you send them into a planet? Will you have a planet of your own? I mean, give us an idea. We want to know what it is. I, there's no official doctrine on the scale of how everything works. I don't know if you're talking planetary or universe. When you say God, the Father, you, was he a man with a body of flesh? He is a man. He has a body of flesh. How many wives does he have? Because I want people, because a lot of people don't know what your church teaches. That's why I'm asking these questions. So how many wives Un does he have? Unknown. Nobody would know that question. So, but you, he does at least have one wife, right? I would say, yeah, that we believe in a heavenly mother. To be honest with you, I was not expecting this Mormon missionary to answer any of those questions, let alone answering them in a positive. Do you believe that you're going to become a god? Yes. Does God the Father has a wife or many wives? Yes. Most of the times, Mormons often distance themselves from those occult and demonic doctrines. When they're asked about those questions, they usually avoid them. But in this case, this young man was frank about it. And by the way, despite the fact Many Mormons will say that there's no official church doctrine for something that they believe that's heretical or demonic about Jesus Christ or God the Father. They will all answer the same way, which differ from what the Bible teaches. Watch this. Do you believe you're going to become a god one day? Yeah. Why? It is in the scriptures and the prophets have told Where? us. It's all throughout the scriptures. Where? Do you think it is plausible that God has a god above himself? that he reveres and honors and worships. Sure, I mean, I'm not gonna say I believe that, but I'm very open to that idea. Does God have a God above him? Absolutely not. Uh, the scripture's clear here, O Israel, our Lord is one. There's no other God but our God. There's no one above God. He's immutable, uh, he's sovereign. There's none like him. Do you think that Heavenly Father has a a God above himself that he worships or reveres a heavenly grandfather kind of So there's no like church-wide belief on this, but I do believe that yes. If eternity really is eternity, then it would only make sense that yes, he had a creator as well, yeah. like a, we have a creator. Does God have a God above himself that he worships? No, God is the I am. He is the only God that has ever existed. He's the only God that will ever be. Just him and him alone. I um, mean, Isaiah says that there is no other God. I know not one. God is the only God. Do you think it is conceivable that God has a God that uh, was his God that he revered and honored and, uh, and worshiped him? Yes. I believe so. I don't know the exact points of doctrine on that. It hasn't been fully revealed yet, but I, will, I believe so personally. I mean, if you ask me, it does look like there is an official Mormon church doctrine about the nature of God that is completely antithetical from what the Bible teaches. Before we get back to the interview, I want you to watch a snippet of a Ben Mormon cartoon and see what they think in terms of their doctrines when it comes to God, Jesus Christ, and even us black people. The following piece of animation, based directly on actual Mormon publications, highlights these major doctrinal differences. Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. They say that long ago on one of these planets, to an unidentified god and one of his goddess wives, a spirit child named Elohim was conceived. This spirit child was later born to human parents who gave him a physical body. Through obedience to Mormon teaching and death and resurrection, he proved himself worthy and was elevated to godhood as his father before him. Mormons believe that Elohim is their heavenly father and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mysterious star called Korah. 
Here, the god of Mormonism and his wives, through endless celestial sex, produced billions of spirit children. To decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there, Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Wanting the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one-third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. I was actually really shocked the first time I came across that video because a lot of it sounds really weird, very cultic, demonic, sounds like Greek mythology, but when I understood that this is actually what the Mormon church believes, I knew that they weren't Christians. And although those cartoons are banned by the Mormons and they claim that they don't believe these things anymore, but when you interview them or you meet them in the streets and you ask them questions such as who God is and what they will be after death, whether they will have a planet with millions of wives or some other weird stuff that their literature state as dark doctrines, you'll see that they still believe the same exact thing. For instance, listen to what this Mormon University professor said about becoming a god. He has to receive a satisfactory interview from his bishop and from his stake president. There he's asked or she has asked certain rather penetrating questions about their worthiness, their morality. If he's a full tithe peer, that is the only way that we can be with our Heavenly Father. Otherwise, uh, we could not be in his presence. The motivation for the Mormon male to commit to such requirements is the promise of endless celestial sex with thousands of goddess wives, along with a personal planet to rule and reign over. However, Mormon males who fail to meet all of the necessary requirements risk being castrated upon their entrance to heaven. So you can see why the temple is so important to the Latter-day Saint, because if he is worthy to go into the temple, and there receive the sacred ordinances and covenants and keep them, he can eventually grow into becoming a god himself. As you can see when it comes to the theology or the lack thereof of the Church of the Latter-day Saints, it's a rabbit hole. A friend of mine actually wrote a 65 page paper of all the weird stuff that she's found on the Latter-day Saints. And now as promised, listen very carefully to this interview I showed you at the very beginning of this video between the Christian men and the Mormon missionary and you'll see that they still believe, hold true and hope in those same false doctrines. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I served a two year mission in Mon Montana. You said you're a return missionary, so you just returned as a missionary. Yeah, I, I got home like two weeks ago. I'm oh, fresh so off. You were on the, the field for two years? Yep. And I know that's mandatory for Mormons. Is that your world? You guys don't use the term Mormon, but that we're used to saying Mormon, so don't take it personally. It's not a it's not a saving ordinance or anything like that. Um, it is highly encouraged. It is a priesthood responsibility, and we encourage all young men who are worthy and able. What must you do to attain godhood? To attain godhood? Well, or that is... God eventually... Through, through the, through the gospel of Jesus Christ to become more like Jesus Christ is. No, but that's not what I'm asking you. You do believe you're going to be, you can be a God? Right? I do believe in a divine potential. Yes, yeah, so you yeah. can be a God, right? Yeah. And will you have a wife if you pass the test and she passed the test? You're going to have a wife, one or a couple. How many do you have eventually? Just so we can get an idea of what you believe your ultimate destiny is. Probably, I would prefer one. One's enough. If you do attain that level, will you be able to have children that you send them into a planet? Will you have a planet of your own? I mean, give us an idea. We want to know what it is. I, there's no official doctrine on the scale of 
how everything okay. works. I don't know if you're talking planetary or universe or I don't know. I yeah, don't I don't know. know. You have your own universe mm -hmm. or whatever it is. What, it, what it, In other words, when you attain, let's say you successfully attain divinity, you become a god. You're going to have your own universe or a planet. What is it? I mean, give us an idea of the landscape. I'm not doctrine on it. I'm not sure. Um, but I do know is that God's intentions is for us to become more like him, to participate in his divine nature. And when you say God, the father, you, was he a man with a body of flesh? He is a man. He has a body of flesh. So that. So that's actually kind of what I, my questions were about is the nature of yeah, we'll God. Get to that, but that's what I'm so people oh. know that Mormonism or whatever you believe in is not even in the ballpark of Christianity. But we'll get there. What I'm saying, I just want to know who was his God, though, if he was a man? He's Heavenly Father. Who was his God? Because he's not the original God, right? Because he, he was a man, right? So, so someone brought him into being. He, so is God for you not? He doesn't have a body of flesh and bone. Then. Yeah, I'm, I want to know because he was a man, so he wasn't always God. So if he was a man, he was brought into being, right? Possibly. That is, so that he's is always existed as a man? That is an esoteric thought. No, that is. is an idea. No, because if he's a man, either he's an uncreated eternal man, or if he's a man, he came into being. So that means someone brought him to me. It's not esoteric. It's just the logical inference of your position. So I'm trying to figure it out. So he's not the original guy, right? I hope you guys are following this pretty closely. This young man, this young Mormon kid or teenager, maybe 20 or 24, actually believes that stuff. He actually believes that to be true. His hope is in that. That is the danger of having a false theology, a false Jesus, a false way of salvation. That man is in eternal danger. There's no like, there's not like a, there's not like a, you know, little checkbox when I, you know, go. Yeah, for can you stop with the checkboxes? Because maybe. this checkbox is getting kind of old. Stick to the point. Checkbox. Check, check. That's the second time you said it. I want to know if he's a man. Was he always a man or he came into being? Because men come into being. So did your God come into being because he was a man or he's always been a man? It is very possible. Very possible. So you guys do not know his origins? Not necessarily. How many wives does he have? Because I want people, because a lot of people don't know what your church teaches. That's why I'm asking these questions. So how many wives Un does he have? Unknown. Nobody okay. would know that question. So, but you, he does at least have one wife, right? I would say, yeah, there, we believe in a heavenly mother. Yeah, and we don't, we don't go into super big detail about. Well, as Christians, we want to know what you believe. Now he got her pregnant, right? Because his first child was Yahweh, Jehovah. There's no, there's no official doctrine as to how spirit children are created. Oh, so is that Heavenly Mother Yahweh's mother too? Uh, well, no, actually, because, well, in the... That's actually more complicated. I kind of like the fact that they keep on saying that there's no official doctrine on something when they're asked about it, and they go on to say the exact same thing across the board. What he's going to say, the majority, if not all Mormons, believe the exact same thing. So it's kind of funny to me when they say there's no official church doctrine on this particular issue, and they go on to explain it across the board, they always say the same exact thing. You would agree that Mary is, not to some extent, but she is part of the motherhood of Jesus Christ, right? Because we believe Christ became flesh from her, yes? But he doesn't yeah. have a mother before creation. So in the sense of his physical body, Mary is his mother. Maybe yeah, but who's the mother of Yahweh? I'm not asking about Jesus incarnate because that's the mother of Christ because he took his humanity from her. I'm talking about Yahweh because to you, from my understanding, that's why I'm asking. Elohim, the father, and you have Yahweh or Jehovah, the son, and he becomes Jesus. So Yahweh, Jehovah, before he came to the world in the flesh, does he have a mother? I I actually don't have any official church teaching on that. Okay, I, okay. I actually, that, that, I, I'm going to play fair with you. If I don't know an answer, that might That's be something fine. that I have to I go and respect you a lot more. Like. I respect you a lot more when you just tell me you don't know. I'm not here trying to judge because I want people to understand where you're coming from. So when you ask me questions, they'll have a context. Because when Muslims ask me, they have a particular context. And I'm sure if I ask people in the comment section, were you aware of these beliefs about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Many of them don't know. So God the Father is a man. He's God. He has a body of flesh. He has a wife, at least one. And Yahweh, or you prefer to say Jehovah, I don't know. He then becomes Jesus Christ. He's the one who becomes Jesus. And you do believe that Lucifer is his brother? Not in the literal sense. The spiritual sense. Right? We're all, cause... Yeah, because because Heavenly Father is the creator of all things. So, so Jesus Christ in spirit is a creation of him. But we also know that Jesus you, Christ you created that... the heavens and the earth and everything around it through yeah. Heavenly Father. So... Do, you, do you get that from the Book of Mormon that... Jesus Christ or Yahweh who becomes Jesus was created? From the Book of Mormon. I, I, I thought that was the the Bible. No. I'm not mistaken. Can you show me in the Bible where it says that Jesus Christ is Yahweh's created? 
So as you guys can see, this is not Christianity. This was my issue with The Chosen. I've done a couple, maybe three videos, maybe four videos on The Chosen, and people kept on criticizing me. It's because the founder of the TV series partnered with Mormons, and he called Mormons his brother in Christ. When he is on this side, an evangelical, and the Mormons on the other side are saying that Jesus was created, and Jesus is the spirit brother of Lucifer. This is demonic when it comes to theology or the lack thereof. I, I don't even know what to call that. I mean, that's really disturbing. Those people, they need the gospel. They need to hear about the true Jesus Christ from scripture, not the Jesus they concocted or Joseph Smith invented for them. Can you show me in the Bible where it says that Jesus Christ is Yahweh's created? I might not have it off the top of my head. That's fine, because it's not there. That's not what the Bible teaches, but that's I'll let, let you Try to find the passage. So the definition of the Trinity, can you give a solid definition? Before within... we go to the definition, I'm waiting for you to show me where it says Jesus is created by the Father. Because I, I have an article in the Book of Mormon. Book of Mormon doesn't even teach what Joseph Smith later taught, but that's we'll get into that. My question is, you said that the Father created Jesus, who in his premium existence was Yahweh. So I'm waiting for that. Can you show me that from the King? Because by the way, they go with the King James Bible, right? That's what the, that's the translation you prefer, correct? Yep. So yeah, where does it say that the Father created Jesus? And it's pre human existence. We're not talking about him as a as a man who became flesh. Um, it says first Colossians, and this is my understanding. Yeah. You're welcome it's to have a different Colossians. interpretation. Before you go on, it's not first Colossians, it's Colossians 1 15. I know what you're quoting. It says who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn, but it says, For him by all things were all things created who's and are him? heaven and the earth. Who's him? You skipped over it. You went too fast. Who? By him? Who's him? Who created it? Jesus Christ. Okay, so I want you to understand how you're going to end up refuting yourself. I'm going to bring it on the screen for everyone to see. So we're going to use the King James Version because that's the translation you prefer. It says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, on, the firstborn, it the firstborn it from the dead. Person, if you talk over me, head. then that means you're here to debate me, and it's not going to bode well for you. Don't try to debate me. You're too young to debate well, me. Well, I was, I was reading through the whole thing, and I got Let's go through slowly how it buries your objection, because you don't understand what firstborn means. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created. Is there anything excluded in creation that Jesus didn't make? All things means all creation, right? Yeah. You sure? Listen to yourself carefully. By him all things. That's every created thing, right? So for by him all, were all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things. You notice it's a present tense, right? Right, Carson? Yes, you see so it? This, is referring, this is referring to yes. Jesus Christ, correct? Yes, and by him all things consist. So if Christ created every created thing, and he is before every created thing, and he sustains every created thing, that means he exists before all creation, correct? Logically, follow the logic. If he created all things, and he is before all things, then he's not part of the all things, he exists before all things. That means he's not is part he... of creation. Did he create Heavenly Father or anybody else like that? Who, or said, who said the Father is part of creation? Listen to my argument. If he created all things, which is all creation, the Father is not creation, the Spirit is not creation. You went to this verse. That means he is not part of all creation because he exists before all creation, correct? Read it. It's right there. Yeah, but yes, but my question is, is that so with with the Trinity, there's what you call concepts, cons. The concepts, um, yeah, but yeah. before we get to the definition, I want you to show me how this passage proves your assertion, but you didn't answer the question. I'm going to ask it again, young man. If it says he created all things and he is before all things and he sustains all things, all things are every created thing. That means he exists before all creation, right? So, so but our interpretation, we still didn't interpretation answer the question. our inter well, I am answering the question. Yeah, answer the question, go ahead. Our interpretation of the scripture is that he is the literal son of the father and that by him he, created, he created he created everything. So yes, he Carson. does predate all of creation. Okay, Carson. But he you. is the son. I'm asking you about the text, not your view. So you do follow. No, I'm interpreting my view of the text. Let me ask you a final time before I send you packing. The text in front of you, deal with the text. If I bring a Muslim or an atheist, they can tell me what the text means. They can say, well, yeah, the text says this. Unless you're that brainwash, which I hope you're not. If I bring an atheist and I say, can you tell me what the text in front of your eyes are saying? Can you do that for me? Do you agree that this text in front of you, in front of you, is saying that he exists before all creation? Yes, but I was... 
I okay, no, don't give me a point. Can I, am I allowed to break no, down? No, you're not allowed if you don't let me finish the point and you start. So I'm if not, he's before I'm, all I'm creation, to... is he uncreated? If he's before all creation, then he's uncreated, right? He, I don't think those two things are equal to each That's other. That's why you waste the time. I don't see them. Logically, yeah. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted you to hear how blasphemous this religion is. God is a man. He's got a body of flesh. His fake God, who's Satan, Lucifer, has a wife. And his fake God supposedly created Jehovah, who's Jesus. I mean, it's unbelievable. God revealed himself to us in the Bible, and we are to understand him according to what he said about himself in the Bible. The Bible said that God is one. In his being, he is one. But there are three persons. Those three persons are co-equal, co-eternal, and consubstantial, which means they are of the same essence. So Jesus is not God the Father. God the Father is not Jesus. Jesus is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not God the Father. There are three distinct persons who are co-equal, co-eternal, and those three distinct persons are all God. That is why Jesus says in the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name, not names, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All God is one. Jesus was not created. God the Father was not created. God the Holy Spirit was not created. They are uncreated, just as we just saw in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. In John chapter 1, verse 1, the Apostle John, inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. When you go down in verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. That is Jesus Christ. So those demonic Mormon doctrines that assault the truth about the Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit need to be exposed. And we need to preach the gospel to lost sinners, and those lost sinners include Mormons. Mormons need to know that they need to put their faith in the real Jesus, in the true Jesus, who is the way, the life, and the truth. God the Father sent God the Son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life on our behalf. He suffered and died on the cross. He was buried and raised on the third day and ascended into heaven. Now, whosoever put their faith in Jesus Christ will be saved. And those saved people turn away from false doctrines. They turn away from cults. They turn away from their sins and trust fully, hope only in Christ, in Christ alone for their salvation. That is the true gospel. That is the true Jesus. The true Jesus is is uncreated. He is God, just as God the Father is God, just as God the Holy Spirit is God. I invite you to trust, hope, and put your faith only and only in that Jesus for your salvation. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please feel free to share it with a mom and friend. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.